Hello and welcome to the Certified Financial Education Instructor Training Course. I'm excited you're here with us today and commend you on your interest in gaining the skills needed to be an effective financial educator and advocate. As you know by now, there's a financial illiteracy epidemic that is impacting the majority of people around the globe. Studies show we have a big problem on our hands. From a $6.6 trillion retirement funding gap and over 40% of people having less than $10,000 saved to three quarters of people living paycheck to paycheck and about 25% of the country relying on public assistance. Having personally spoken to over 10,000 people while reviewing their complete financial profile, I have seen this problem firsthand. This not only impacts their bank accounts, but many areas of their life, from their health and relationships to their personal esteem. Fortunately, there is a cure for this problem, a practical financial education. You have the ability to help people avoid many of the problems and worries and stress that they suffer from today. Although the problem associated with lacking financial capabilities are clear, most people have never received a financial education. In fact, our kids spend 12 to 16 years in school gaining the skills to help them earn more money, yet little or no time is spent helping them gain the skills that improve their overall financial situation. The NFEC is actively working toward a national solution, and your efforts contribute to the overall financial literacy movement. We are committed to training and collaborating with the most qualified personal finance instructors. As your financial education resource provider, we measure our success by the impact you make. We are here to support your efforts by providing the education and outreach tools that will help you promote financial wellness. I want to take a moment and thank you for your interest in bringing a financial literacy initiative to your community. This is still a grassroots movement that is led by financial educators and advocates. Your work is highly valued and needed. I commend each of you because you are the front line of this movement. I would also like to thank Transamerica for their dedication to support this program and the overall financial literacy initiative across the country. With that said, I would like to introduce one of our lead instructors, Mr. Steve Repack. Steve is a certified financial planner, professional speaker, Army veteran, and author of Dollars and Uncommon Sense, Basic Training for Your Money. Steve has been a frequent guest on Fox & Friends, Fox Business, The 700 Club, CNN Headline News, and other major media outlets. Steve is a preferred presenter responsible for the lesson deployment of the Department of Defense's financial fitness roadshows that were conducted at major military installations across the United States. Please welcome Steve Repack. Thank you for the introduction, and I would like to welcome everyone to the Certified Financial Education Instructor course. It is my pleasure to be here with you, and I look forward to seeing you develop your skill sets as a financial educator. I know your time is valuable, so let's jump right in. Throughout the course, you'll be learning the best practices of teaching personal finance. You'll be learning about the psychological aspects of making financial decisions, instructional techniques, measurement, and how to quantify your program success. We understand that each of you has a personal story about money that likely inspired you interested in teaching this subject matter. So you'll also find we'll walk you through how to personalize your presentations and how to leverage your stories to inspire others. Throughout this training event, we're going to have a mixture of videos, interviews with various experts, and we'll be asking you to complete various activities. We want this to be an action-based course for you and suggest that you participate in all of the activities. Use the pause button during the course so you have time to complete the various tasks. This is an activity-based lecture, so you're going to be doing things like today, writing out your mission statements as far as where you want to take this financial literacy initiative and different things that will help you plan out your personal outreach plan. It does require your attention. I know via live training you can get distracted. Put away your mouse, sit back and relax until the activities come. We don't want you to be messing around viewing other sites. We want you focused and watching this. This is the next best thing to live training class, but it does require you to pay attention, to stay focused, and really concentrate on your end goal. It's our goal to train the highest qualified certified trainers. We're focused on helping you improve your abilities to teach personal finance. 
We want to help you improve the financial capabilities of others and move them to take action on what they've learned. In order to do so, it's important you take part in continuing education courses we have throughout the year. I read a story on Mark Zuckerberg a few weeks ago and he said, we're in a constant state of beta when he was referring to Facebook. I like that because he's not satisfied. He's always trying to improve, tweak it, and make things better. That's what the NFEC is about, and it's obvious because you're watching this video now, you value professional development opportunities. Lastly, this is gonna be a fun and rewarding experience for you. What you're gonna find out for many of you is that you're already out there teaching financial literacy. You may be employing some of the lessons we're gonna be talking about, but it's gonna give you a framework so you can duplicate that and understand why and what you're doing is successful, or maybe why or what you're doing may not be as successful as you want it to be. And you'll just notice if you just make a small tweak or a small change here and there that it's gonna make it that much better. We hope you have a rewarding experience. That's my goal, that's my mission. I want you to leave here with the material that you're looking for to help you on the road to teaching personal finance effectively. With that said, let's continue on to get into what this training will do for you. As many of you know, the main focus of this training is to help you gain that confidence. When you're out there teaching financial literacy, you're confidently taking action and showing people how to move them from wherever they are now to a greater state of financial capability. That's our goal for you, to give you that confidence. Now the interesting thing about teaching people about money, it's different than any other subject taught. Different than math, history, English, all those subjects. We'll get into the reasons later, but for our educators who have been teaching for many years, just realize this is different than maybe some of the subjects you've been used to teaching. Let's introduce you to the rest of the education team as they share additional benefits of the CFEI course. For our personal finance experts, financial professionals, and just concerned citizens out there that are teaching, a lot of the educational theories may be new to you. We're going to learn a lot in that section. Other sections you're going to already know. We have a persuasive way about our teaching techniques that's focused on benefits. Many of you are used to that in your practice. As we get into the later sessions, we're going to ask you to contribute and collaborate your thoughts. We're also going to get into those different principles like the educational principles, the theories, so we can give you a really clear framework, and this framework is critical. We're going to talk about measurement, but also besides measurement, how to measure your personal success. Not just the students' measurements on how much they've improved, but also measurements for you and how you can quantify your success as an instructor and how that develops over time. One of our big focuses here and what we're going to be talking about is how to improve retention rates and help people form positive financial habits. And this phrase I'm going to say right now will come up many times, how to move participants to take action. I think that's one of the unique things about our program. Our focus is on helping participants take action. We get to motivate others about financial literacy. We educate, we engage, and we take them to that next phase, which is the action phase, which is really where everything happens. I want to pause here and point out that action phase is just not for those that we're teaching financial literacy to, it's for you as well. One of the key things about this coursework is we want you to get excited about teaching. People report after taking this class, they feel a lot more excited because they're confident in their abilities. They know what they're doing is best that they can deliver to the audience. Of course, they could always improve just like I can, just like you can, but they have that sense of enjoyment. They have a sense of, hey, I've done my background. I've practiced my presentation. I've took this training and I'm having a good time seeing the response of the audience. Seeing the improvement in the pre and post test, taking longer term measurements and seeing how they've grown over time. The thing that I find in common with people that take this course is that they do have a passion for teaching financial literacy. We want this to be an outlet for your passion. We want you to find your voice and really get fired up when you're teaching these lessons because it's something fun. It's something that everybody needs and it can drastically improve their lives. We talked about framework, and the key thing is for many of you, it's knowing that you're making a difference. 
I can't tell you how many emails, phone calls that we get saying, thank you so much. It could be a big thing like, hey, this really changed our lives, or even a little thing. I ran into a young lady that I did a presentation for maybe two or three years ago at a local high school, and she told me that she was saving her money. She was putting it in her employee retirement plan, different things like that. That probably wasn't much, but she was taking action on what she learned. And it made me feel good knowing that even just that little step, it could really make a tremendous difference for her down the road. That's what the training will do for you. The neat thing about our training, we're not just regurgitating what's on the instructor's guide. Many of you that have the curriculum as well, so we're not going to be going through the specific lessons one by one. You're smart, you can read those lessons and figure it out. Most training, they just film a teacher reading an instructor's guide, teaching it to the class. If you need help with the instructor's guide, there is help available online through the videos. You're gonna receive a link here shortly. We're going to dive several levels deeper with this type of training. We're going to focus on the principles, the theories, and the techniques that you can use to become a more effective instructor. This course will help you improve the impact you make and you'll feel rewarded knowing that you're doing everything in your power to make it a lasting difference in the lives of those you, you reach. How will you feel when you know you truly made a difference in someone's life? Think about it for a second. Teaching the subject matter, you can truly make a lasting difference in someone's life. Here's a brief overview of what we'll be covering during the CFEI coursework. The main goal of the training is to help you move people to take action so they can better manage their finances. It's important you remember financial literacy is a unique subject and all of the subjects that we cover are designed to make you a more effective educator. First, we will be exploring the financial illiteracy epidemic. Knowing the problems people are going through today is important because for some people, you may help them proactively avoid the stress, worries, and financial burdens associated with financial illiteracy. For others that you teach, you may be helping them overcome financial challenges. Understanding the problems that people are out there facing today will help you relate with them and guide them on the path toward financial wellness. What you're going to find out throughout this course is that we're going to be talking a lot about psychology. In fact, everything has to do with money, has to have a psychological effect to it, and everyone you come in contact with it has a pre-existing relationship with money. Even little kids today are forming financial habits as they're exposed to advertisements and how they see their parents handle their finances. The behavioral psychology associated with money management is one of the cornerstones of this training. We're going to be talking about measurement how to measure the impact of your program to see how successful you have been as an educator and how much the students are retaining. And for those of you that are looking to raise funds or get that message out there on a wider scale, how to utilize these measurements to illustrate the success of your program. So we're going to be talking about those two aspects of measurement, measuring the impact of your effectiveness and the student's retention and also putting together reports that will help you build and fund what we call a sustainable program. We're going to spend a lot of time on teaching financial literacy. We're going to break that down into many sections. One of those is teaching techniques. How do we teach them in a way that's going to engage and get our audience to take action? We're going to talk about the student experience. How do we create an experience that's in alignment with what they're expecting and what the brand name is showing and so forth? We really want to use new marketing techniques to create an experience that gets them excited about learning about personal finance. We're going to talk about the holistic approach to teaching financial literacy, which essentially boils down to not only teaching the end user. If you're working with teenagers, not only the end user, we're going to show you how to bridge that gap to the parents, to the teachers, to the other people that have an influence with them. When we're teaching adults, we do the same thing. We're talking to them about how to teach your kids about money and providing them resources. The more people that are involved in this education process, the more they're hearing it, the more frequently they're hearing it, and the better it can help their retention rates. We're going to get into some general presentation steps, such as how to prepare, how to conduct presentations, what to have, check sheets and different things like that. Pretty valuable lessons there. 
we encourage you to complete this workbook as we go throughout the coursework. This will help you put all the pieces together and get you started on developing your unique voice and presentation. Now that we have a good overview, let's get on to the content. We encourage you to complete the workbook as we go through the coursework. This will help you put all the pieces together and get you started on developing your unique voice and presentation. Now that you have a good overview, let's get into the content. The National Financial Educators Council is dedicated to creating a world where people are informed to make qualified financial decisions that improve their lives, the lives of those they love, and the lives of people that they impact around the globe. The NFEC is an independent, for-profit financial literacy council with a social enterprise business model. This structure gives us the freedom to deliver unbiased financial education and assist organizations in need of support. Social responsibility, conscious capitalism, and free enterprise are the fundamental principles underpinning our teachings and overall business model. As a financial literacy resource provider, the NFEC has developed more than 80 financial literacy assets designed to provide a practical financial education, raise awareness, and help ensure maximum program impact well into the future. Our programs have helped organizations and individuals reduce the time, expense, and personnel needed to implement successful financial literacy initiatives. Using an open source model, the NFEC shares best practices with people who seek to improve the financial capabilities of those in their community. The NFEC is uniquely positioned to share best practices because its material has been tested by reputable organizations around the globe, providing feedback, test results, and surveys to generate empirical data needed to fine tune and perfect the programming. The best practices models developed by the NFEC set important standards that others emulate. The NFEC's programs have been referred to as groundbreaking, effective, and revolutionary. The materials employ multiple touch points, collaboration, and modern marketing techniques to maximize campaign benefits. I want you to take a look at one of our recent PSAs. And as you watch this, understand we feel that the individual financial educators and communities around the globe are really leading the financial literacy movement. It's educators that make the biggest impact. And you'll understand after watching this PSA how together we can make a bigger impact if we work as a group. The recent economic crisis has affected people's finances, health, emotional state, and relationships. They haven't received a bailout or the financial education needed to secure their future. Now, a new day is upon us. Concerned citizens and people around the globe are standing together with the National Financial Educators Council, empowering themselves and members of their community with practical financial skills so they can enjoy those treasured memories spend time with friends and loved ones and relish special moments that bring us closer. Together, we can educate the citizens of the world so they can live their own personal American dream. Let's get into our first activity. With this and future activities, be sure to complete the exercise. Pause the video as needed and complete the entire activity to the best of your ability. Each exercise serves as an important purpose and the training will build off the lessons. As you're doing these initial activities, I'll also be introducing you to the NFEC's education team. Erica Jackson worked for Penn State Erie as its director for the Center for Financial and Consumer Outreach. Jackson was responsible for financial literacy programming and community outreach slash collaborations. She also served as Executive Director for Junior Achievement of Erie County and on the Technology Council of Northwest Pennsylvania where she was responsible for all projects dealing with brain drain in Northwest Pennsylvania. She has conducted financial education presentations for statewide organizations such as the Pennsylvania Office on Financial Education, the Treasury, Department of Investments and Securities, 
and the Jumpstart Coalition. Gary Jekyll is a leader in the financial education space. He spent 30 years in personal finance and corporate finance, including a stint as a CFO of a publicly traded company. Gary returned to school to get a teaching certificate in secondary education so he could follow his passion for teaching and promoting financial literacy. He conducted comprehensive research on the topic of teaching personal finance and compiled this research in a book titled, Teaching Personal Financial Education. His publication has been made part of the NFEC's certification program and shares financial education best practices from around the globe. Let's get started with the first question that you should complete in your workbook. Why are you interested in teaching financial literacy? I believe teaching financial literacy is vitally important in today's society. I can't tell you the, the numerous stories that I've heard of individuals who've gone through just financial stress. Individuals who are 65 years old in retirement age that don't have enough money to be able to survive. Single moms who are trying to figure out what to do with their money because they don't understand what a budget is. College students who are just using credit card after credit card after credit card and going into debt. Getting this wealth of information, understanding these financial concepts, and having financial capability is vitally important. It's important because it not only impacts them, but it impacts their family, and it also impacts the community as well. I got into teaching financial capability after a career in corporate finance. I realized that we were really a nation of financial illiterates, and as Robert Manning called it, a credit card nation. I looked into the possible reasons for this, and one thing I found out was that we were not teaching personal financial education in our school systems. Yes, some states are today doing it. However, for most, it is still not a priority for them. So what I'd really like to see happen is more financial education programs in the school system and a real push by the school systems, states, and even the federal government to, to make sure every child, every high school student, and to some extent every college student has taken a course in personal financial education. And the second thing I've always believed in was that we needed to improve the quality of our teaching in financial education. And that's why I'm very pleased to be associated with NFEC. I hope these examples helped you better understand why you're interested in teaching personal finance. The answers you wrote down is a work in progress, so feel free to adjust your answers at any point. Next, I want you to know how this will help you personally and professionally. As you write that down, we'll introduce you to the next set of experts involved in this course. Diane Larson is an award-winning economics teacher who was honored by receiving the Jumpstart Coalition Outstanding Educator of the Year Award, and her students have won the statewide stock market simulation four times. She has been selected by the U.S. State Department to travel as an ambassador to South Africa to offer her expertise in economic education and financial literacy. Diane is a UCLA graduate and teacher at Mater Day High School where she teaches economics, business economic education, and business law. Tony Stoyer is a recognized authority on life insurance, disability insurance, and long-term care insurance literacy. Tony helps to shape the conversation on insurance literacy and education by serving on the California Department of Insurance and NFEC's Curriculum Advisory Board. He has led the way in establishing a path for insurance literacy through his award-winning books, Questions and Answers on Life Insurance, The Life Insurance Toolbook, and The Questions and Answers on Life Insurance Workbook, a book Forbes named as one of their top nine great investment books. Financial literacy training is important to you both personally and professionally since it helps educate you and your clients on all financial services products. It allows you to be a better advisor. There is an old saying, if you give a man a fish to eat, you feed him for the day. If you teach a man how to fish, you feed him for life. And that's what financial literacy is all about. If you teach somebody about their finances, you're teaching them how to manage their whole financial life, not just giving them a financial product for one day. This concept is now taking place 
in children's education through something called the Common Core Curriculum, which is all about the comprehension of different things. Common Core teaches children to understand the why of something rather than the actual outcome. If you can educate somebody on a subject so well that they can turn around and educate the next person about it, then you've really done your job. Competence builds confidence, and the more information you know will greatly enhance not only your understanding of the subject matter, but more importantly, help you improve the quality of delivery of that information, which can have a meaningful impact to the participants who are receiving it. You'll feel good about yourself because you'll be confident in the material and therefore will be able to motivate your audience to take action, which is a win-win situation for both you and the people you're trying to help. Did you get that down? Please remember, everything you're doing here is a work in progress. As you go through the course, you'll be picking up additional information on ways that can benefit you personally and professionally. We encourage you to adjust your answers as ideas come up. The next thing that I want to know is how will it make you feel when you get positive feedback and know you've really impacted their life? Write down that answer now as the education panel shares their experiences with you. Two words answer that question. The feeling is deeply rewarding when you know that you have set your students on a path that will carry them well for the rest of their lives. Yeah, it's a great feeling. That's what motivates me every morning to come in and be involved in the financial literacy space. You know, from little things, I ran into a young lady from Target who I guess I spoke in front of her class many years ago, and she said as soon as she started Target, she started saving and putting away money in her company's investment plan. Other times you get some instant gratification, like when a veteran came into an event we did, and you can see she was weighed down the entire day, but then after the day concluded, you see this entire new person, this weight lifts off her shoulders, her eyes sparkle. She was a brand new person and excited to go tackle some personal financial issues she had. And other times you'll get emails or phone calls from people a few years later that says they've improved their life, their relationships are better, they feel better. So it's a great feeling to know you've truly impacted somebody's life and the beauty with financial literacy and the financial wellness space, we have the opportunity to do that on a daily basis. Vince Shorb is CEO of the National Financial Educators Council. He's been instrumental in the development of high profile financial literacy campaigns, including a statewide initiative for Penn State University Erie and an international project that is currently rolling out to serve 450,000 people. Vince has been featured on CNBC, CNN Money, The Big Idea with Donnie Deutsch, and his public service announcement was featured in Time. Vince has been instrumental in the development of over 80 financial literacy assets that serve organizations around the globe. His passion for raising awareness for the financial literacy movement led him to partner with over 50 celebrities and sports stars. And the last thing, what do you want to learn today? Before you start writing it, it is important to know that the NFEC is committed to three core areas, education, awareness, and sustainability. We know you all want to improve your impact as an instructor inspiring participants of all ages to take positive action. Maybe you also want to learn how to improve your credibility as an educator. Many of you want to promote financial wellness and raise awareness in the community about the financial literacy movement you're a part of. Or maybe you would like to build a financial literacy program that helps you fund your business or other projects. As you write now, Think about all the things that can help you be an effective financial educator and advocate. I'm going to move off this slide, but I want you to focus on one thing. I want you to spend more time thinking through those. When we have strong reasons why and when, we can share them in a way that's meaningful. We're able to commu communicate that better. So I really want you to spend some time on this after class. Go back, really think through this because this is going to help you draft your overall personal plan. So what is this financial literacy anyway? Here are a few definitions. The Government Accountability Office, GAO, defines financial literacy as the ability to make informed judgments and to take effective actions regarding the current and future use and management of money. It includes the ability to understand financial choices, plan for the future, spend wisely, 
and manage the challenges associated with life events, such as a job loss, saving for retirement, or paying for a child's education. Jumpstart has this financial literacy definition. Personal finance describes the principles and methods that individuals use to acquire and manage income and assets. Financial literacy is the ability to use the knowledge and skills to manage one's financial resources effectively for a lifetime of financial security. Financial literacy is not an absolute state. It's a continuum of abilities that is subject to variables such as age, family, culture, and residence. Financial literacy refers to an evolving state of competency that enables each individual to respond effectively to ever-changing personal and economic circumstances. The NFUC's definition of financial literacy is possessing the skills and knowledge on financial matters to confidently take effective action that best fulfills an individual's family, personal, and global community goals. I know this definition is a lot shorter than the others, but we feel it's very concise. A couple key points in here, I think, are where it says confidently take effective action. And that's a really big four words because a lot of people out there do not have the confidence to take action and they're often left in dire financial circumstances. So if we can get people financial capabilities to a point to where they feel that sense of confidence, they know, hey, if I don't know the exact answers, I can go find an advisor. I can go online and find it but I'm confident enough in my own abilities to take those steps to move forward. That's a big thing. And that's one of our jobs as instructors is to not only motivate and get people down this course, but getting them to take those initial action steps and keeping them on that path toward their financial goals. And the important thing is to remember that money relates to the overall goals of those we're serving. Now, everybody have different goals out there. Some people want to be millionaires. Other people just want to live a certain type of lifestyle. You know, some people just don't want to have to worry about money anymore. But the one common thing is most people want to have a sense of financial wellness, a sense of comfort. You know, whether somebody wants to take vacations with the family or, or buy a new car, whatever those specific goals are, we're not trying to push our goals onto them. We are trying to figure out what their objectives are, what their lifestyle dreams are, and give them instruction that will help them make their plans, their dreams, and their visions come true. As you are aware, there are important benefits that people experience when they possess financial knowledge and the confidence to make decisions that align with their longer-term goals. Here are some of the few of the top benefits reported to the NFEC. Some of the benefits of teaching financial literacy include lifestyle. We're going to talk about lifestyle quite a bit because that's what really motivates people. We can throw out numbers all the time. And a lot of people simply aren't motivated by numbers. Some are, and you can still include this information in your presentations and so forth, but it's mainly this vision of lifestyle. So let us take a moment to kind of sit back and think about any ads or things that you've seen on TV. Kind of what are they focused on? It's really people putting this type of lifestyle information and kind of how they're living. That's what's out there. They're not talking about how much really is in their bank account. They're showing people enjoying the sailboat or individuals cruising down the coast or individuals spending times at a barbecue with their family and their friends. We want to bring in that modern day advertising and marketing into financial literacy because it's effective and it works. If it wasn't effective, there wouldn't be billions and billions and billions of dollars spent every year for marketing and advertising in that way that's heavily benefit laden and heavily focused on lifestyle. We're building up reasons for people to take action. One of the big benefits of learning about lifestyle is having free time to help the people gain freedom to do what they enjoy. Finding out their dreams. How would you spend today if money wasn't a current concern for you? We want to know that when we're teaching participants, because that's going to be leverage that will help us convince them that they want to learn this information. 
a lot of people are wanting to make an impact on the world. And the interesting thing is that we get this comment from kids and teens and young adults, students in college, more than we actually do adults. This is a big one for them. They want to make an impact. They want to make a difference. They're hungry for life. A lot of adults want the same thing, but we really see that this is prevalent with the kids and young adult crowd. Helping loved ones is common among all age groups around the world. One of the top reasons people want to learn about money is to take care of their friends, family, and loved ones. And by learning how to do this more effectively, you're helping people to do that more effectively as well. And of course, what's money without some toys, a little status, some other things that may not be the most positive reasons that people are doing it. However, there are reasons. It is important to have fun, have balance, be able to do things you love and are passionate about, whether it be buying a boat or whatever that may be, taking travel in the world, whatever that may be. One of the big things is the American dream, and this really is a global concept. Those of you joining me from other countries, welcome. But the American dream really has reached all corners of the globe. It's the dream that we should have a richer and fuller life. But I think this next line is very important. With the opportunity for each, according to their ability or achievement. And us as financial educators, that's what we do. We help improve their financial capabilities so they can make decisions aligned with their longer term goals. Now, as basic as this concept sounds, making, being able to have the financial capabilities aligned with longer term goals, as simple as it sounds, as powerful as it is, it's not taught in schools and this blows me away. So for our kids today, they go to school for 12 to 16 years and in that time, all they simply learn is how to gain skills to earn more money. And yet little or zero time is spent on showing them how to save, grow and invest their money. They have no concept on how to manage their money. So they spend all this time in school being trained on how to become workers and not how to retire or live those lifestyle goals. So you guys are fulfilling such an important role rounding out that education. Now I think it's great that they're being educated so they gain these skills, but there's a critical, critical piece missing and that is financial literacy education. So I, I'm very appreciative that you're interested in teaching the subject. And I know most people here understand the importance of it. Obviously, I believe in education. Education works. We can teach people algebra. We can teach people how to balance a periodic table of elements. We can teach them how to manage their money. So everybody here is a direct contributor to helping those people individual participants you reach live their own personal American dream. Thank you for joining us today. I hope today's introductory video gave you a better understanding of people's motivating factors, a better understanding of the overall program and added inspiration to go out there and start making a positive difference in people's lives. In our next video, we'll gain a deeper understanding of the financial problems people are facing today and how you can proactively help them avoid common financial issues. Don't stop now. Continue your momentum and start the next video now.